we are pleased uh, to be joined by so many different great artists over the run of our show and uh, unique art as uh, unique artists as well. And one of the most unique artists we've ever been joined by is Aaron Shea. He is the director of the Habitat Galleries, which is America's first contemporary glass art gallery and the largest glass art gallery in the United States, located right here in Royal Oak. Aaron, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Luke. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about the art gallery. What kind of pieces are featured there? Obviously, they're all gla it's all glass art, but what are the, some of the different kinds of pieces that people may find? They're looking to put some unique art into their home, into their business, and want to engage with this local art gallery that is very unique here in the state of Michigan. Well, thanks. Yeah, we are the oldest and largest, as you said. And when you walk through the doors of our gallery here at the edge of Royal Oak in Michigan, it is life-changing. The, uh, the gallery offers work by the most talented artists from around the world. This particular artist behind me, Alex Bernstein, is a second generation artist from North Carolina, while others are all the way in Australia, Japan, Czech Republic, Sweden, everywhere in the world. So when you walk through our doors, you're gonna see the best of the best. And it takes a certain life uh, style and education to really appreciate art in general. And this is a small niche, but it is the fastest growing. Many museums in the area like the Institute of Arts, the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation, even Toledo Museum, as well as the Fort Wayne Museum in Fort Wayne, Indiana, have all expanded recently, showing more and more glass because it's a way of approaching uh, artwork for a new generation. The way the NFTs have blown up online for even younger people, glass has become more and more exciting today. We're joined by Aaron Shea. He is the director of Habitat Galleries, located in Royal Oak, and he joins us today on the Megacast to join them for the ongoing Glass Art Fair 2021, which is running now through October 23rd. Uh, this is also an online event too, Aaron, correct? Correct. A lot of the artists couldn't come in or send work in because of what was going on. So we gave them a platform, which is the glassartfair.com, which is an online website to see many of the artworks virtually that are in the show. We advise people heavily to come into the gallery to really experience it in person because it's so much better, but you can get a grasp of the amazing talents. Everybody has their own unique and st unique style of creating artwork. And there's a whole history, the Studio Glass family tree of like who stayed under who. This whole thing started in America in 1962 in Toledo, Ohio by an artist named Harvey Littleton and his students trickled down from there. And you can really follow along with this narrative as, as e art, each artist works develop, work, develops their own techniques, and you can see it all both in person, in museums, and virtually. We're joined by Aaron Shea, director of Habitat Galleries, America's first contemporary glass art gallery, and the largest glass art gallery in, uh, in the United States. It's located right here in the local area in Royal Oak, and he joins us today on the Megacast. And you're also, uh, in 2021, uh, your art gallery is promoting a year-long glass competition uh, that's featuring 12 artists who are pushed beyond the norms of, contemporary, of the contemporary art world. Tell us a little bit about this competition and, and some of the interesting art that has been featured in this competition so far. So yes, this competition is called Not Grandma's Glass, and it's focused on artists that are not in Grandma's art collection yet. And during the pandemic, I realized there's a ton of artists that we couldn't show, and this gave them a platform to really create their own experience online and give a talk. We do Zoom talks like this every single Saturday, and the first of every month around then is a talk of Not Grandma's Glass. So there are artists that create works that you wouldn't see normally in a museum because we have an artist named Chad Fonfaro who does these dead birds, an artist named Morgan Peterson who does pop art focusing on art, music artists that are, she's experienced in her career. Mattis, Mattis Cookie who creates trash glass, things you take for granted that are now laid out in the streets are now a fine art. And as of tomorrow, we're visiting an artist named Dean Allison who creates the most amazing bus out of glass ever seen. He does commission work, he does children and grandparents all around and he's gonna give us a talk tomorrow. And he, he just completed a piece or is close to completing a piece that took him an entire year to make focusing on uh, uh, a African-American girl blowing glass and giving uh, a respect to her towards a, a full-blown organization, which is great. So join us tomorrow to see that. We're joined by Aaron Shea. He is the director of Habitat Galleries, America's first contemporary glass art gallery and the largest glass art gallery in the United States that's located right here in Michigan in Royal Oak over in Oakland County. And uh, it's uh, also uh, starting in January of 2021, 
Uh, so yeah, that, and that's where that uh, competition began. You can learn more at notgrandmasglass.com. And Aaron, I want to talk to you about glass art because every form of art, whether it be uh, a visual form of art, whether it be media art, uh, whatever the case may be, they, they all have their special elements that make them unique, that make them interesting, either visually or, or, by, or by texture or by touch, by any other sensation. Why is glass art so special? What is unique and special about glass art that for you and for others makes it so interesting and appealing? Great question. It's, it's the only medium you can do anything to. All the other techniques you can apply to other mediums like paintings and castings of bronze or metal or carving in wood, you can do all that stuff to glass. You can work on it hot, you can work on it cold, you can smash it up, glue it together, you can paint one side of it and then paint it again and see the original side the first on the first side you painted when you look through the glass on the other side. The medium itself uh, allows for many, many artists to develop their own techniques. There's a lot of science and chemistry that goes along with the medium because you have to know certain temperatures or how much weight or strength the glass, glass actually has to create what you're looking to expect when you come out with it. It's a whole learning process. People spend a lifetime getting to where they are today before they show up in our gallery. There are artists like Ann Wolf who have just retired at age 90, who creates huge cast glass pieces focused on family, home, and nature. And she's got there over a whole lifetime getting to that particular point. And it's quite an amazing work to see. And this stuff, again, is show-stopping and life-changing. This piece behind me, I think, is like 32 pieces that establishes a glass city. It took them a while to figure out how to get those different things to appear in the glass rather than just melting into a, a pool of pool of glass on the bottom of the kiln. So it's an incredible field to be part of, and it's an amazing amount of talent. We're joined by Aaron Shea. He is the director of Habitat uh, Galleries, which is uh, America's first contemporary glass art gallery. It's also the largest glass glass art gallery in the United States, and it's located right here in Royal Oak. They got an ongoing uh, glass art fair going going on. It is the Habitat Gal Habitat Gallery's Glass Art Fair 2021 not running now through October 23rd. They got some really interesting uh, artists this weekend and, and events this weekend virtually uh, via Zoom. Join them Saturday at 1 o'clock via Zoom uh, on their Habit Habitat Zoom with uh, Dean Allison, the Menon Collection, uh, live at Fort Wayne with Steve Lynn, uh, Sept NGG September with uh, Joseph uh, Ivic Ivicic, uh, Glass Art and Fair Preview, as well as the Jewelry, uh, jewelry of the Zodiac. All those are, are virtual events as well, so you can join them for those. You do have to RSVP uh, for some of them, inc including uh, not Grandma gallery featuring Dean Allison but that's all uh, at glassartfair.com where you can learn more about uh, about that and and see some of that art and engage with them so what can people expect from these virtual events this weekend for the glass art fair what what do they typically experience when they do uh, attend one of these virtual events sure so um, you can see a lot of the details a lot of things you, you mentioned already are pre-recorded and up right now on uh, our YouTube page. You can get it to it from habitat.com, our regular website. But you get, a, you, get, you get to dive into the client's, into the artist's life. You get to experience what, they're, what they do, how they create stuff, what their vision is. And it takes an amazing person to, do, to become an artist and, sell, and sacrifice your life to create and give away everything you create. This particular artist, Dean Allison, is, is, is an amazing talent who really d dives into the life of people around him. Children, and the piece he's just finishing up now, which I'll give you a preview of, is the story of his daughter looking through a window at his dying aunt who's dying of COVID, that experience where she couldn't get close to see the, see the family member as she was going close to pass away. And he made this entire thing out of glass, along with a window, along with a, a wooden chair that sits in front of it, that you're supposed to experience the same kind of feelings both of them had as a child and the adult going through that kind of narrative. So you really have artwork that really speaks to people on a certain level that tugs at emotional, tugs an emotional uh, tone. Here at the gallery, we actually have a lot of work by Dean Nelson on display that you're welcome to come see. We're actually celebrating 50 years of Habitat. This is our 50th year of mm -hmm. being. And there is an amazing display here in the gallery at Come See that's open through October, as you mentioned. So you'll see Dean's work as well as many others who are part of the Not Grandma's Glass show here, as well as artists that won't really qualify that are part of Grandma's uh, art collection on display, a variety, well over 400 pieces on display in the gallery. And also we have something called the vault, which opened up this year, which is a large back room. And I call it a back room, but it's really a back warehouse. And it's uh, an opportunity for people who make appointments to come and see the treasures that art galleries have in the back. And it's an also another life-changing changing experience 
because there is an incredible amount of inventory that we're willing to share with the world. We're joined by Aaron Shea, he's the director of Habitat Galleries, and he joins us today on the Megacast. It's located at 4400 Fernley Avenue in Royal Oak. Their hours are Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. until 5 p.m., but you can also join them online for their Glass Art Fair 2021 by going to glassartfair.com, where you'll also be able to learn more information about Not Grandma's Glass, the show uh, which shows the art world that is changing and is featuring some great art artists uh, in a competition uh, in this uh, in this year as well and all, that's also uh, able to be accessed virtually and so Aaron just a few more minutes with you before we go you're di the director of the Habitat Galleries it, it's a it's a, it's America's largest glass art gallery it's located right here in Royal Oak but for you what interested you in glass art are you yourself a glass artist and, and, and if not what draws you to this art so when I was a child, I blew glass it, here in Pontiac at Albert Young Studio, local artist, and it was hot and it hurt. Um, and it took a real appreciation to get the idea of people who can create this kind of stuff and create these incredible works uh, every day. And it, for me, it was a family business. My uh, my stepfather, Ferdinand, founded the gallery in, in 1971, and they needed someone to come help with the, the, when I started in 2005, with the details and inventory preparing for their large international show. We actually had our 49th year of our inter international exhibition, which is on glass49.com still, that people can go explore and see the artwork from that show. And so over time, people develop relationships. You start to learn about the artists, the people, the clients. We call ourselves a Habitat family, which are people who are involved in this art world. And there's no other medium out there where people have such a community of support for each other. People who love glass, people who love the artists, uh, people who share their collections with the world and collect uh, and kind of checklist off the artists they're drawn to. Art is a very unique topic for people because it's very personal. People need to acquire and buy things that they love and enjoy. You're giving up your time, your money, and your space in your home for to enjoy these artworks. And it's it's a it's a when it works out, it's it's a life changing experience. There are a lot of clients who come in and don't know what what's going on want to learn. That's what we're here for. We're here to show you and talk to you about, you know, the artists that are in our community, the people that create the artwork, and then try to find what your tastes are. You may like this behind me. You may not like it. You may want a more authentic figure piece. There are artists like Dale Chihuly and John Kuhn, who are the most well-known glass artists in America. And there are artists in Europe, like Berta Valin and Lubinsky Braktova, who are the most well-known artists in Europe. So between the two of them, you know, you start to figure out what you like. And from there, you start to learn, again, who studied under who and what artworks you're drawn to. There's an artist in a Seattle named Raven Sky River who makes the most amazing sculptures out of hot glass, representing the sea world, giant sharks, huge turtles, even mollusks, mollusks and clams and uh, seahorses. He's worth checking out on Google. Google Raven Sky River and check out his work. We have three pieces on display here, a giant whale, a giant turtle, and a giant fish that are just incredible in person. I have no idea how he makes them. Just goes to show the lifetime effort he's put into creating artwork um, from his own techniques over time. And he's still working today. A lot of our artists are. There are, uh, and you get to meet them in person. A lot of them come to our big events here. We had two big events in uh, September, this month of September. We had a, a three-day weekend for those who wanted to come in from out of town. We had a great event here, lots of space and safety precautions in place. We went to the Flint Institute of Arts to check out the display there. We did a scavenger hunt there to, to explore the, gal the museum in a new way. We had an auction that was very, very successful, selling work in the secondary market. So, and then the public opening was a week later to separate it, and that was great. We had a huge turnout of people. We had the whole parking lot decked out so people can come through the gallery and go hang outside. And people got to experience the glass in person, which is something we haven't done in a while. Well, Aaron, we appreciate your time. Thank you for telling us all about Habitat Gallery. It's a really unique gallery that people can visit right here in our local area in Royal Oak. Thanks for your time. You're most welcome. I look forward to doing this again. Take care.